Good evening and welcome to the Discoverer series of the Online Wine Tasting Club. Caroline's back over there, so make sure there you is. get yeah. into the... That is, there we go, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's that. That is her hand. <laughs> that could have been anyone on the planet. But, uh, it we, could, it could we be trusted. We promised us. it was yeah. Caroline, we promised it is. Um, so welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're doing a whole month of Italy this month. We are, um, we are, so it's been got, a while. We're doing a little bit of Sicily and we're doing then Tuscany. Tuscany yeah. our, uh, now, remind me, why, why are we going to Italy, Jamie? Well, we could we could start with a uh, with a drinking game, but uh, every time I say, do you remember the time I went to in Italy? Yeah. We could drink. But then I think the show would last about, what, three and a half minutes and it would all be over. So for the benefit of people at home who don't normally go to wine trade shows, I which is one, probably most of them, I went what is Vin Italy? Oh, I, I was just saying I went to one this morning. You went to one this morning. Yeah. Okay, step by step. There we go. Step by step. So, it's so, Vin Italy, one of the better so ones. Vin Italy is insane. Um, it is an absolutely insane thing. So if you go so and once again, if I'm talking like a little badger, tell me to shut up. But you go to like London Wine Fair, and yep. it's wines from all around the world at, um, at Olympia. And that's fantastic. You get to go and see a lot of different things. You go to Vin Italy, it is Olympia times 20, and it is 95.6% <laughs> Italian wine. So you have, <laughs> you have an Olympia for... Tuscany, you have an Olympia for yeah. Sicily, you have an Olympia for Piedmont, and it is absolutely insane. And it's um, your chance to go around and taste some of the finest wines of Italy in, in all great things. So that is uh, that is very cool. Oh, the Slido code, we should actually just give the code the number because I have to do the um, redirect. So I'll sort that in a moment when we're in the video. But um, yeah, if you go to Sly.do and then we enter our code, which... Uh, Caroline's got up on her screen, actually, so she'll be typing it in. Oh, sorry, uh, just... If you, yeah, on your Slido, the, it's got the number. It's 349652, as it always is. So 349652. 349652. You are, you are good. I can't do that with my glasses. <laughs> but there we go. But anyway, so we're, we're talking a little. So I had the joy of going out and meeting some phenomenal wineries, some mm -hmm. phenomenal winemakers. And <clears throat> I think what we try and do on the Online Wine Tasting Club is to take us to these places yeah. and tell these stories of of what it is all about. So um, make an offer you can't refuse. Oh, I see what's going on there, Neil. I see what's going on. He's got he's got jokes and things. He's got jokes, but <laughs> I'm assuming he's disrespecting us. Well, you know, <laughs> he, uh, you know, it's uh, well, sleeping with the fishes or a horse's head in your bed. It's one of the two. Oh, no, anyway, it's also about corrupt politicians and outrageous things going on. I oh no, no, that's just our, us, isn't it? I yeah, proposed yeah. our wager of what's going to happen. Fair point, fair point. Um, but oh, yeah, we will score a goal or Boris resigns. <laughs> <laughs> I think Boris will resign some point into the 2040s at this rate. He'll be dragged kicking and screaming out. Anyway, anyway. that is nothing that to is do nothing with what we're doing So we are in Sicily. <laughs> and so, for those, uh, everybody knows that we only talk about Italy in the shape of the boot and the football. And obviously, Sicily is the football. And it is a wonderful, wonderful, great growing place. Yeah. A lot of um, what they class is, they say indigenous grapes, but you know, if you read back through the the, hit, the history of Sicily, there's been so many people yeah. who have come through Sicily, Different it's been invaders. a trading port, it's gone through. And you know, it was written that Sicily is a combination of 20 different cultures mm -hmm. over time to create what they have. And they've got these wonderful grapes that you see, A, hey, only in Sicily, or very rarely in other parts of southern Italy, um, and absolutely fantastic stuff. And hopefully we'll get to taste through a few of them tonight. Yes, we've got a Fiano, which you might see in Campania and yeah. other places like that. <clears throat> but we've got plenty of grapes which are classic Sicilian, and you don't really find anywhere else. You know, you don't see Grio or you know or Catarato in that many other places. And you know, is there a reason for that? Should we be growing these grapes a bit more? Well, hopefully we'll get to find out by trying them. Absolutely. So let's. Should we get wine number one in the glass? That's a good that's idea. Probably important <laughs> because it's a, it's definitely a drinking day. It is. It's the first time the Euros, and that's what's important. As he says with Italian wine in his glass. So, Sicily it is an absolutely massive wine growing region, and we'll, yeah. we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the video. Um, and they grow a lot of their own stuff, and it really, you know, in the 1800s, they had about 320,000 hectares 
under vibe until Phylloxera came through, which yeah. is, you know, and we'll see when we get to the quite how massive <coughs> that is. Um, but always made a lot of bulk wine, a lot yeah. of bulk wine, a lot of stuff that ended up blended into something else or was just a wine of Italy or something Turned like into that. vinegar, and, all sorts of things. And that was about 80% of it, and only yeah. 20% ever got into a bottle. Mm. Um, but what I love about Sicily is the fact that you have all these different areas, all these different climates you've got, you know, and you look at, there are single vineyards, there are cooperatives, there's lots of different things, but you've got so many different climate styles from, you know, over in Masala where you get this beautiful sea air coming through so you can get these bright, fresh styles of wine and also Masala, which we'll taste later. Mm -hmm. We will, yeah. Nowhere else in the world makes wine like no, no, Masala. No, there are wines and a little bit like it. But then you can go into the south. Safe where it's a little bit warmer, you get these richer, riper styles, we can mm -hmm. go and hang out with people making wines on bloody volcanoes. Yeah, you can, and, and obviously you gain altitude pretty quickly when you go up a volcano. It's just a risky place to, to grow grapes. Exactly, <laughs> you can tell your stories yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what we've got here, so wine number one, because it's time to start drinking before we go into the first video, otherwise everyone's going to be very thirsty and very sad with us. Um, so this is the Colato Arrini, and the grape here is Inzulia, which is one of mm -hmm. your indigenous, so your three big indigenous whites that you find that get blended into, most things or done as single vineyards, are the Inzulia, the Grillo, and the Catarato. And you know, there's Camiena, there's uh, Fiano, which we'll taste now, and there's lots of different things, but these are the three grapes that these, um, this island's really known for as far as whites go. And this winery is, just about the oldest still functioning winery in Sicily. Started in 1875. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, have we got the slider up so people can start putting their tasting notes yeah. in before I get overly excited? Because what is interesting about a lot of these wines that we're going to taste tonight is they are their own together. thing. Sometimes you get to taste a different wine. You go, oh, that's kind of like a Sauvignon Blanc, or that's kind of like a Pinot yeah. Grigio, or that's kind of like this. What these wines have is they have a real, real sense of place that in Zolia, it's in Zolia, and it's not really like anything else. And I'm not expecting everyone to go, oh yeah, yeah, pick that up and go, oh yeah, that, that's in Zolia, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But what we are hoping you'll think is that's different and in a pleasant way, because I, I think it really is. It's very refreshing indeed, and, and that's a good thing. It is. Um, we could go two ways here. Do you want me to dive into a little kind of like, a little basic WSET as to what we're looking for when it's a different wine, and then we can. I do... think that's a good idea. I think yeah. it's a good starting one because it's going to be a common thing for a lot of these that, wines. And then so... we can start drinking wine too when we jump into the video. Yes, we like that exactly. Idea. Fantastic. So, because there's a lot of times you pick up a a glass of wine and you go, oh, that smells a bit like a Chardonnay or a bit like a Sauvignon or a bit like a Pinot Noir or whatever whatever you're picking, you can have this preconceived notions and you try and put it in this little box, and that's sometimes you're right. You're wrong, you're indifferent, but it's sometimes easier when it's a grape that you know. When you pick something up that, you know, and if you've all drunk a load of Inzolia, tell me to stop <laughs> yeah. right now because, um, you know, I'm boring you. But if you've not had a lot, what we do is we pick the glass up and it's working out what the wine is. And then from, it's not what the wine is, what do we like about it? What are the flavour profiles? So if we do like it, what can we pick up? And if we don't like it, what is it that we want to avoid when we have another glass of wine? So we pick it up, and the first thing we look at, you know, and we go back and he'll mock me, we go, is it red or white? Yeah, obviously it's a white wine. <laughs> Stop it. I'm saying um, nothing. But then, you know, a white wine has different colorations. You can go from absolutely transparent, translucent, crystal clear, to these really kind of dark yellow, yeah. brown colors and everywhere in between. But you look at this, and you can kind of see, if you take your thumb and put it behind, you can kind of have a look through. This is very, very clear, very, very light. You've got a little bit of a yellowy kind of colour, but we're not hay, we're not golden. No. We're <clears> that. It's not into that green side either as well. Yeah, exactly. It's just a very and, and if you've got a bright little, yellow. If you've got a little white piece of paper that you can put in front of you, you can see it starts yellow in the middle, and when you get to the meniscus, it's almost clear. Yeah, you see that's almost... That's the bit of the edge. The bit of the edge, sorry. <laughs> meniscus, bit of the edge. Um, so that will show that it's a relatively young wine. So just from looking at it, we think we're going to have a light, fresh, young style of wine. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, a, It doesn't fail on that part. Then we have a little bit of a, a little bit of a sniff. And wine vocabulary can be difficult because people want to say delicate peach or pears or badgers or wet grass on a, you know, wet grass on a Tuesday afternoon. And 
A lot of the time, you, you pick it up, you smell it, and then someone like me will go, oh, that smells like peaches. And everyone goes, yeah, peaches, it's peaches. Because you get led down that common path. But we can split white wine into four main categories. We've got our citrus, so that's our lemons, our limes, our grapefruits. And you can just stop at citrus, that's okay. You don't have to go all the way down and go, oh, it's lemon peel that's being candied or whatever. If you want to, that's great. And the more in-depth you get, the more excitable you can be about wine and the easier it is to kind of pick what you like and not like. So we've got that citrus. Our next one is our tree fruits or our orchard fruits. So that's our apples, our pears. And that is, is it a Granny Smith? Is it a baked apple pie? Is it that? So we can pick those up. And there's not a right or wrong answer on no, any no. particular one. <coughs> It's what you get and what you taste. And wine is inherently linked with memory that you, you'll pick that up and go, oh, that reminds me of my grandmother's apple pie. Or that reminds me when I was sat, you know, on a beach somewhere drinking that wine and that tasted like this. Or, you know, it reminds me of this sweet I had when I was a kid. So we've got those two. Then we move on. It's quite ask. cultural dependent as well, because if you go and ask the same question to people from different parts of the world, you find completely different answers. How? Now, this is a very fun question that's just popped up there. Um, do we ever put a word in the leaflet description that's called <coughs> red herring and then enjoy coming back to you and say, no, we haven't done that. We and I actually think that. we should so do that. When, when we get on, when we get on to <laughs> egg, now I've got a story for everybody, but we're not okay. there yet. We're not there okay. yet. So our third thing is our stone fruits, our, our peaches, our apricots, our nectarines, yes. those kind of things. And finally is our tropical fruits, where you can go as weird and wonderful as you want, and you can tell a lot by a person about their tropical fruit yeah. choice. You know, your general man on the street will talk about bananas and pineapples. And then there's people who go, oh, you know, they're essential tropical fruits of dragon fruit and guava and mango. Papaya. Essential. Papaya. Oh, there's an essential person essential over there. Papaya. Essential <laughs> shopper, if you know what I mean. So from there we pick those things up, and then we'll have a taste. And when we're tasting... Well, we've got, we've got other groups of flavours as well, though, because I think the other big thing on this one, and the, on the nose, you've got, obviously, the... Oh, I'm going to... He's going to start having a go at me now, but mm -hmm. let, let it roll, because, because particularly when you're smelling it, totally the big smelling. thing that is there is it's, it's, it's quite floral. Is it floral or not? And that's one of the big things for me, is I don't like fl uh, wines that are overly flowery. Is that a fair thing to say? Well, no, I was just looking at your so, WSET level all, one tasting notes. They're all on and, your shirt. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> they are all, well, actually, yeah. I think some stone fruits. But yeah, some floral things and herbaceous things, like, you know, where there's a hint of mint. And, you know, for this, me, I'm getting a bit of melon with a little bit of mint on it. And I quite like that. But it's not bombarding you with honeysuckle or anything like that, as some do. Anyway, <laughs> but then we taste it, don't we, Smith? <laughs> Oh, sorry, am I allowed back now? No. no. Yeah, get on with it. So oh, what can we, what can we taste? I'm not sulking. So, <laughs> so, I'm just trying to make it nice and crystal clear for everybody at home. But, you know, tan tangents are okay, because, you know, but not tangerines. Not no tangerines. So citrus. No. Um, so, <laughs> once you've done all that extra bullshit that Alex wants you to do, you can come back into taste with <laughs> it. Words. Oh, my God. Right. I Please. promise it's not going to be all be this silly tonight. So we're just getting back into the swing of things. Um, so, but yes. So once we go back in, we're going to taste it. And when we taste, we're really just looking to clarify that what we smell is what we taste. And sometimes, you know, certain things will be more prominent, less prominent, or disappear altogether. Mm -hmm. You go, oh, I smell peaches, and then you don't taste peaches. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is what we're looking at. And then, you know, there are <laughs> things gosh, that you can talk it. about, you know, body, alcohol, acidity, all those kind of things. Yeah. But we're not going to get into the deep meals for that. But what I want you to say is we've got, you know, we've got a lot of peach, we've got a, le a lot of lemon, yeah. we've got some melon, we've got apple, we've got salty. There's lots of really good tasting notes up there. But what I want you to take away from this is if you like this wine and you like it, do you like it because it's peach and lemon and melon? Mm. Or if do you not like it because it's peach, lemon and melon? And both of those points are 100% valid. Yeah. So it's being able to break these things down and go, oh, I like, I'd like it a bit more if it was a bit less peachy. I'd like it a bit more if there was a bit more lemon. I really don't like it because of that <coughs> salty hint. And if you can start having those conversations, that allows you to get to your next great glass mm. much quicker. And there are, there are another couple of things as well, that, which is like, if you're in that, the, which fruit flavours are we tasting? Um, there are some of those fruit flavours which are really associated with warm places, like, for example, Sicily, which is a pretty warm place. It's not, not that far off the coast of Africa at all. 
Um, and there are other flavours which are it's generally not far, simpler. It's not that far off the coast of South Italy either. It's also not warm. that far off, which is, yes, which is quite warm. But um, if you prefer the flavours of sort of lemon and citrus, things like that, you're probably more likely to prefer something from a slightly cooler region. If you like ripe, big sort of peachy fruit flavours, it's probably going to be somewhere a bit warmer like this. And, and but that, there's always exceptions. And that becomes <laughs> the thing that as you get to learn what you like, don't like, love, enjoy, mm. You can then ask those questions. Say, you know, and I think people find it easier to say about things they don't like about wine. Yeah. I don't like it when it it's chewy. I don't like it when it tastes like burnt toast. Whatever it is, um, and then we find the next thing. Because if there was one wine, you know, and everyone liked the same thing, we'd have one white and one red, and it would be really boring. But I think we're at the stage that we're chatting a little bit too much, and we should probably go to our video and talk a little bit about Sicily. I think at the end of it, it says we're going to go back and talk about wine to one, but. Get wine to in your yeah. glass. We'll have a last look at the tasting And we'll have a last bit. look at yeah. the tasting notes and move on to the Fiano. So as you're drinking, move on to the next wine and we shall continue. We'll see you in a few moments. See you then. We're back. Okay, so um, the joys of tech. We did a sit through tech run through. Everyone worked. Alex wrote a song, and we'll go from there. So, um, where are we going to go? Are you going to come and join us? I'll come and join you. Right. Caroline's going to come and join us while Alex goes and. Hi everyone. So Caroline is back, which is probably much more, much more fun for anybody. Um, so where are we going? So we had our, had our taste notes on this earlier. So light, peachy, fresh, delicious. Um, so we'll kind of go over a little bit of what Sicily's all about and see about it yep. to get his video working. But it is such a massive, massive place for wine. A really important, um, really important, um, you know, Italian wines. It kind of gets left. And the back end, when we talk about Italy, we talk about Piedmont, we talk about Tuscany, we talk All about... All the super premiums. You know, yeah, you know, Montepulciano. And there's, there's all these kind of places to do that. And Sicily just gets kind of left by itself. Oh, Claire said hi, Claire. There's people who want oh, to... Oh, hi, Claire. Nice. It's lovely nice? to see everyone. Well, I can't see you. Um, so, but Sicily has always been, in terms of quantity has always been one of the biggest producing regions of Italy, hasn't it? Absolutely, and as, as I mentioned earlier, it's a lot of it ends up being this mass-produced because there's there's a lot of there's a lot of co-op in Italy, which is where all the yep. farmers get together and they share resources and they're just making wine that is just drinkable and doable. But because it comes from here, there, and everywhere, 
it becomes difficult to give it its own place, either rather rather than just a um, you know an IGT Italian, which is your table wine. And that thing kind of, of style. provenance is what adds real value, um, and um, something to for the producers to invest in as well, from a marketing point of view and from a tourism point of view, and for consumers to buy into. Um, I think well, it, it sits both ways, doesn't it? Because there's there's a lot of wines out there that go. I've got to be from a t particular place, a particular vineyard, a particular row, a particular that, and then I can charge whatever I want. Yeah. But I think Italy is the, the epitome of the opposite of that. You look at Tuscany. That's interesting. Super Tuscans. Yeah. Nothing more than an IGT. Yep. Because they don't fit the rules of Which, Tuscany. And an IGT, for anyone who doesn't know, is um, sort of one up from table wine in Italian sort of classification and people have done that deliberately so that they're not tied to specific grapes, specific blends, specific vintages. Exactly and it's 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 a twofold thing these these either DOs or DOCGs or AOPs or wherever they are in the world that on one side it protects the consumer because if you buy a XYZ appellation you know what you're getting. You know you're getting this grape and it must be X amount of alcohol, it must be this, it must be that. Mm. On the other hand, it really stunts creativity yep. and adaptation to uh, to the world. Um, but there we go. Anyway. Should we have one last look at the taste notes for yep. wine one? Yeah, and then we can absolutely. So, you know, I think there's a lot of things we discussed as we did the, um, you know, the, the WSET thing. We talked about peach, we talked about lemon, melon. And, you know, it is a very, for the first one, a night, very light, fresh citrus and going on. It, it was, but, you know, I absolutely got that slight salinity coming through on it as well, sort of, that, that cuts through well, and adds it? something you, a bit more you, interesting. You, 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 and people go, oh, how does salinity get into, uh, get into wine? You know what the answer is? Well, it's <clears> normally by the sea. Salt, yes. Yeah. And it's such a way that, because when, you, when you're by the sea, the sea air comes in, it sits on the grapes, and people don't pick their grapes, they go and wash them down. No. Because you wash them down, you add more water that gets absorbed, and it becomes just swill, there's no need for it. So when you have these coastal wines, which Sicily is obviously an island, you end up with this uh, fantastic, you know, almost savoury salinity in the back end. Mm. And we sometimes talk about terroir and where a wine's from, and sometimes being like, yeah, terroir tastes like dirt. But there are certain wines, and especially coastal wines, that you get that feel of you know where Definitely. that is and you can sit there and imagine sat on the beach or in a restaurant on the cliffs just overlooking and drinking and i absolutely got that from wine one it's the kind of wine that you'd love to have with a light dinner after a day on the beach on holiday it just it really um brings up a lovely image in my head absolutely so should we jump onto onto wine too yes I love a Fiano. You do? I do. I love a Fiano. Tell me all about what your love of Fiano. Well, it's... It's, um, it's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. It's delicious. I mean, there's just... Caroline's back, everybody. Hi. It's delicious. I'm here all night. Well, I might not be if I get chucked off. But there, there's... Versus wine one, there's a bit more oomph to the Fiano. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a technical... Um, WSET tasting term. Oh, it's not. Um, one, it's not one of the WSET no, clusters. So. No, but the, the, you know, it just feels a little bit fuller in the mouth, a, a bit, f f a little um, bit richer, a little bit more powerful. Yeah, absolutely. The, yeah. So wine number one, nice, elegant, fresh dish. This, I think, we're starting at the point that we're crying out for a bit of, a bit of food with this. This yeah. is, you know, with a cheese board, with mm. some kind of like meaty, almost like shellfish, the scallops, the lobsters, langoustine, that kind of stuff with this. Um, and this is Mandarosa, and um, I met these guys at Vin Italy. Oh, did you? Have you been recently? Tick. Um, <laughs> what I love about these guys is, and I don't want to, I don't want to give any prizes away from from the beginning, but these guys create a fantastic range of, you know, mainly indigenous grapes that taste like they should from the place they should at really really good value mm. because sometimes you go for indigenous grapes and because they're small production it's more expensive to make and they jump up and there's you know there's more more cost um but these guys make fiana they make grillo they make inzolia they make frappato and are absolutely fantastic fantastic wines um you know they're i say relatively new on the block they started 1999 so well sadly that is quite a long time ago now and we're old oh. 
you know, but it depends. It depends on your level. It depends. It depends on your anchor point, doesn't it? If we compare yeah. it to Bordeaux in eighteen fifty five, they're brand new. True. If we compare it to China making wine, they're really yeah. really old. Um, but I just think this gives this beautiful richness, this beautiful texture. Have we got tasting notes up for this? Yes. Barbecued scallops. Oh my god, Neil! I'm really, really loving that suggestion. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Love it in whiskey too. What? Ooh. What do we love in whiskey too? Uh, whiskey, probably. Yes, we'll take I love it in whiskey too. Barbecued scallops. Yes. Um, Finn, once again, with some fantastic oh, notes. Oh, we love Finn's tasting but Finn, notes. Tasting notes are good, but where's the, uh, where's the um, pairing? I thought, yeah, I thought you were coming to cook for us. Um, so here's a question, Jamie. Is Fiano always that little bit fuller, that little bit riper, bit more tropical fruit, or is it um, how this winery has treated the grapes? So um, it, or do you get more delicate, elegant? It depends where you come from. This? So it always has this tropical feel about it from mm -hmm. the Fianos I've had. But you do get lighter styles. You get lighter styles that more kind of like Pinot Grigio esque, right. um, especially if you go up into Campania, which is kind of like the shin of the uh, shin of the boots. Yep. Um, where you get a little bit lighter, but that's we're getting a little bit further. It's still warm, but it's cooler. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, being on Sicily, you've got this richer, it's warmer, so you get this richer, riper style. And I think this is what's important when we talk about a lot of grapes that not you can't tar a grape with the same brush and go, oh, I don't like Chardonnay, I don't mm -hmm. like Pinot Noir, I don't mm -hmm. like Fiano, because where it's grown and how it's looked after can be very, very different. You go up to Campania and there's a fantastic wine if you do the San Gregorio, who I love. And yeah. they make this Fiano di Avellino, which is it's beautiful. It's wine. light, it's fresh, it's crisp, mm. it's it's a million miles from this. Yeah, no, this is so much richer than that. But same grape. And I think that's what's really important that you want to look at is the fact that you don't want to go, I don't like X grape. I don't like or yeah. you know, people make these blanket statements going, I don't like Sicilian wine. Well, we're going to taste six wines today that are so chalk and cheese from mm. each other. You can't make that statement that I don't like it, I don't love it, I don't enjoy mm. it. It's finding the one you like. And as I've always said, we don't expect everybody to love every wine that we're doing. But there's a right wine for the right place. And yeah. this, sat outside, barbecue, scallops, shrimp, that kind of stuff, phenomenal salinity yeah and i think we might find that as a as a run through in a, in a lot of the wines that we have today because we are on an island and because we are a lot of the wine you know there is the definitely an edge of you, salinity if you look at you know if you look at the map of <coughs> sicily we've got palermo in the north and then we come down to where masala is on the on the west side mm -hmm. very coastal we then go down to kind of like the southeast, and that's where Vittoria is, which is one of the big uh, DOCG regions, which is, you know, the the pinnacle of yep. top great And wine. we've got a wine from that DOCG, haven't we? And then we? we go a little bit further, we go round the corner, we go up, and we've got Etna. But once again, volcanic soil, but you're on the, the east side, and you're yep. there's not a lot of wines grown in the centre of Sicily that are of note. Because it's too hot and too, um, it's, it's too flat, hot. You don't, yeah, probably. Too hot, you don't get the, the coastal thing. There's wine made there, absolutely. Mm. And grapes are grown and there's a wine for it. But when we talk about the the more quality wines yep. in the world, you're looking at these, these coastal yep. regions. Yeah, which is generally true, I'd say, of winemaking regions across the world. It's where you've got some altitude, some water that there you can grow um, better quality fruit and make more interesting wines. But if you look at Italy, we're going back to Italy, which is quite interesting. You look at France, you've got kind of like Burgundy here and Rhone here and Loire here, and you've got these wine growing regions that are separated from the rest of France. Mm -hmm. Italy is just broken down into 20 wine growing regions. There's no, there's no bad places. It's no. a line, 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 line. It's geographical or yeah. boundaries that you go from Tuscany to here, from Piedmont to here, from here to here, and there's not a non non wine growing place. You're right. Really kind of You're cool. right. You're right. And uh, so, as a general rule, if you see a Fiano from Sicily, it's going to be that slightly more tropical, full of fruit flavours. If you prefer the lighter, drier style of Fiano, 
look to sort of northern mainland so, Italy. Absolutely. So it's, you know, very, very northern Italy. And we've got the Alps. It's cold. Therefore, less ripeness, high acidity. Yeah. As we come further south, we get warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer. And then, you know, that ends up in ripeness. And it doesn't mean that all going to be that style because people can pick early. There's lots of things you can do to do that. There is so much happening in your... Wow. Amy, that's brilliant. And, and, but that's what we want, right? We want a taste explosion. We want something really interesting that makes it worth coming on here and discovering something new. Um, so, Jamie, did you taste this out in Vinitaly? Oh. Did you go to Vinitaly? Yeah, I did. Um, and what was it that, about this wine that you thought, I've got to show this on the um, Online Wine Tasting Club? You know, I was, I was so torn between the Mandarosa wines. I was, it was kind of, it was between this and the Grillo as to right. what we're going to do for the, for the white wines. And the Grillo is you know, classically Sicilian, classically indigenous. Um, I just like this one. Mm. And so it's not the other one's bad or indifferent. I just thought from having this as a lighter, fresher style and as a little bit yeah. more roundness to it, it gave a little bit more kind of like differential and contrast between the, uh, the two wines. Yeah, it does to brilliantly. To, to show some style. So there we go. Anyway, are we ready for some uh, some reds? <clears throat> oh, hang on. What's happened? Is England scored, and Boris hasn't left. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> who got who got the goal? Was it a? Uh... Um, was, it, was it Ellen, <laughs> Ellen White from Aylesbury? I'd be very happy. Local girl. Ah. Okay, I'm I'm woefully lacking in football. Well, uh, if you're woefully lacking, you should go and get the next wine. Okay, yes, oh, boss. Sorry, I can do that. I can do that. Okay. Um, so <coughs> we've done Inzolia, which is indigenous to Sicily. We've done Fiano, which is a great Sicilian example of an Italian indigenous. Yeah. What's next? Oh, what's Mr. next, Mr. Smith? Oh, look, Alex is back, everybody. Right. Have we got it? I do, I just need a corkscrew. Oh, do you know what he said he'd go and get the wine? Yeah. Shocking behaviour. So, yeah, everyone, we're moving on to wine three. Snip the corner off your wine three pouch and pop it in the, in the glass. Perdita, so... Oh, there was a, there was a good comment. I find number two... Surprisingly acidic, prefer number one. And that's absolutely perfect because there was a lot of shouts for number two, but it's each person's their own. Completely. And you know, two does have this acidity at the back end. Um, does. There's more richness at the front, but it definitely has a, a little bit going on. But I think that's why you said it was more of a food wine. I don't think it's lots of I'll just give you the bottle. Okay, so we are going to red. And you know, I, I, I met the guy who makes this. Not in Villa Italy, but in Tring Winery about two months ago. So and you went all the way to Italy and then you met this chap here? Absolutely. Oh. So there we go. Um, and this is Santa Teresa. And these guys are built on indigenous grapes, local history, all those kind of things. So they make this frappata, they make caracato, caracato caracante, and all those kind of... Uh, like, I just, Easy for you to say. Yes. Am, I, am, am, I, am I saying wine names or am I just making up new shapes could be, of pasta? Could I'm could be not anything, sure to be honest. Um, but so, Frappato is one of the three indigenous <coughs> Sicilian red grapes. Well. Is it? Is it indigenous? Yes and no ways. I mean, it's very light in colour, isn't it? It is. Um, so, this is, I wouldn't say it's one of three. There's a, but there's... Sic three main ones. Sicily has what they class as 100 indigenous grapes, of which 20 can make decent wine, is kind of what they call. Um, but it's the same with a lot of things. You know, you look at Primitivo versus Zinfandel, you look yeah, at yeah. Gamay versus Valdegui, Syrah versus Shiraz, that, you know, there's gonna be a lot of things that you'll find somewhere else that could be very similar, but mm. you can also tell 
Mm. Did I whisper that loud enough for everyone? Yeah, to probably. It? Exactly. Uh, but this is 100% Fravata, and this is from Victoria, which is part of the DOCG yep. area. So really good quality. But this is a IG... This is an IGT because they source from around the From market. around. So uh, it, it's the, about making the very best quality rock wine. Exactly. But they're they're all organic, all vegan. So, and, you know, for those who've been on for a while, you know my feelings on that. That The wine has to be good. And then if it's organic and it's vegan, you get those little bonus ticks to go yeah. with. Um, but Rino Rossa is um, named after the soil. So it's like kind of red soil because it's mm -hmm. all this beautiful red soil. Um, and yeah, it sits on the leaves for about six months. They pop in a little bit of oak. They let it hang out for a little while. Um, but this is, for me, this is Sicilian Pinot Noir. It's I was going to say, it's, fresh, it's very much like it's that. It's cherry, it's strawberry, yeah. it's hugely drinkable. Um, this is one of them, and for anyone at home, feel free to, to chuck your thoughts in. It could be served a little bit chilled. I was just about to ask you that. You know, as a oh, yeah. sort of well, heavy you're style rosé. You're just a massive thirty seconds behind. Tonight, I am. Aren't you? Yeah. Well, I don't think I'm doing too badly for having been suddenly chucked in front of the camera. Um, but um, I mean, going back to your tasting notes, you can, if you do the sort of colour test, you can tell automatically it's not going to be a big Malbec style wine. No, it's not. You can you can see through it. It's, yeah. It's, it's this like kind of cherry juice colour. It's and you can tell just by looking at the smell, it's going to be soft, it's going to be round, it's going to be mm. delicate, it's going to be easy going. Yeah, but I think slightly chilled with a really nice, um, I don't know, Greek salad watermelon or something salad. like Yeah, oh, oh, watermelon salad. Oh. Yeah, Pick something that like that. Your bag, Finn. <laughs> I want to know what, what Finn's um, pairing for, for this wine would be. Oh, here we go. Oh, here it is. Very youthful and red fruit forward. Controversially, oh! I think that's a good recommendation. Swordfish or tuna yeah. steak? <clears throat> this one to be is, is actually a little, you know, perhaps a little warmer room uh, room temperature. Mm. Yeah, it's cool. Mm. That's what I said. Wasn't I think it? that's what we that's just exactly said. But what I yeah, said. Um, yeah, Joe, just oodles of cherry. Absolutely oodles. How many is that? It's, I'm going to put oodles and oomph in a little bag for, for my oo words. <laughs> glad, glad. I'm glad I've got you on this. Good with ostrich. Yeah, oh, there we go. I like that. Uh, so a, a lighter meat. Yes, very nice. I've had an ostrich recently. No, I haven't Ever, had... Fact, uh, have you not? Oh, no. I had one in... Well, we are in having a bride, aren't we? South Africa. Soon. Well... Hopefully. That was the plan. That's the plan, yeah. Mm. Ostrich. There's so many things, like, you people need to start sending these things, like, vac packs so we can just reheat them, you know, a bit yeah. of CV to send them down. That'd be very, very helpful. Um, I have good news. Well, I hope I have good news. Has Boris you, resigned? Video, no, not, oh. not that good news. Um, the, the hope <laughs> is that the video has now uploaded in a different way. So I think I'm going to give it a go. Okay. Okay. So, Literally no guarantees, so, people. We so, might be back in a minute. But... Ladies and gents, this was the video you were meant to see 23 minutes ago. <laughs> so it will say we come back to wine one, but guess what? We're going to go back to wine four. But Alex put so much work into this little pretty video that we'll uh, we'll let him play again before we come back to hear me and Caroline talk about the real stuff. The Italians call Sicily l'Isola del Vino, or the Island of Wine, because of how much it makes. In fact. They regularly make as much wine as the whole of Australia. Now, compared to mainland Italy, it feels like a different country. Hotter, slower, crazier, and quite a lot more dangerous. Driving in Sicily, lanes are more like guidelines than rules, and cars either drive at 10 or 100, there's no in between. Thanks to films like The Godfather, we are all aware of its connection with the Mafia, horses, heads, and all that. The culture is also quite proudly different. It's closer to Africa than it is to the cities of northern Italy. Steep slopes, terraces and young, mineral-rich soil means there's plenty for wines to enjoy but also to struggle with. And it's vines that struggle that make the best wine. Now, you're never far from the sea in Sicily. It's windy, it's dry and it's hot, with winds blowing in from the Sahara. Previously occupied by the Greeks and, before that, a tribe called the Sicoloi, hence the name, winemaking has been here as long as there have been people. In 2017, 6,000-year-old clay jars were found in caves and, of course, they had wine in them. 
Homer even mentions Sicilian wines in the Odyssey. Odysseus beats the Cyclops partly by getting him drunk. For years, Sicily was famed for masala wines. Now that's not chicken tikka, but strong fortified wines, a little bit like Madeira. But now, more than what 80% of what Sicily makes is what's euphemistically known as bulk wine, wine that doesn't even get bottled. The grape Catarato is the most widely planted on the island, so much so that it's actually second only to Sangiovese in the whole of Italy. Some of it is pretty bad, but some of it is excellent too. The rest of Europe has sent huge subsidies to the region for decades, and a small portion of it managed to avoid getting into the hands of the Mafia. Today, there are encouraging signs that the money has really started to make an impact, as winemakers are starting to work with experts from other regions to understand the strengths of the grapes that grow on the island and the real possibilities of the soil and the altitude. Yes, for an island, Sicily has an incredibly diverse range of terroirs. In the west, near the capital city of Palermo, things are flatter and vineyards are quite traditional, but go east and it's defined by Mount Etna, an active volcano. When I visited and stayed in a village on its slopes, it was in the process of erupting, which is slightly intimidating, but very pretty at night. Now, if you planted a vineyard to take advantage of that great soil, you're rolling the dice as if it erupts and your vineyard's in the way, well, your yield might be a little bit lower for the next hundred years or so. So why would you choose to put grapes in the path of liquid magma? And why have people been doing so for millennia? And how does Sicily manage to be on the cutting edge of moving to organic farming? These are all some questions for us to explore tonight. But first, let's talk about that incredible scale of the winemaking. While our first wine tonight is made by a family who've been doing this since 1875, many of Sicily's growers are now members of cooperatives, such as Colomba Bianca, who make wine number four tonight. This group of farmers consists of a barely believable 2,480 different members coming together to share resources. To put that into context, one of Britain's biggest vineyards is Denby's in Surrey. You can even go on a tour on its own wine train. But if you add that to all of the vineyards in the whole of the UK, including the 9 million vines planted in the last five years, you will find there is a total of 3,800 hectares of vines. Sounds like a lot. But Coloma Bianca, this single wine producer, have 6,900 hectares alone. One winery, nearly twice the acre of vines in our whole country, and they grow beautifully with high yields, even without needing to spray regularly because the hot, dry winds keep disease out the vineyard and can ripen more grapes. Anyway, that is quite enough talking. Let's go to find out how one of Sicily's older wineries, Curatolo Arini, gets on with arguably Sicily's oldest indigenous grape variety, Inzolia. Hello and welcome back. Thank goodness that worked. Um, the mysteries of technology, how you can do things again and again in exactly the same way. We've been doing this now for closing in on two years. And I still can't get it right. In, in a former life, before I started designing wine packaging machines and making the odd bit of wine every now and then, and shush you, um, I know I need to do some more this year. Uh, but I used to design some, computers and mobile phones. And it's, it, <laughs> if I can't get it right, I mean, it's just, uh, anyway, the joys of life <coughs> where things just don't behave logically. But it actually worked out quite nicely because we were talking in the video about Columba Bianca. Now, I think that, I think that, there is um, one of the other wineries I was seeing was one of the biggest winemakers in Italy as well. So Sicily is full of some small, tiny little family projects and some big super winery projects as well. And I love the fact that both of these can survive and thrive next to each other and do something a bit different. And I think the Colombo Bianca wines are just incredibly good at doing what they're supposed to do, aren't they? Um, Get you drunk. No, no, accompany oh, food on a very social night and have you a little bit more relaxed by the end of the evening. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So <laughs> let, let, let's, let's get forward the glass, because we have, and let's flip Slido on so people can have a little chit-chat about what yeah. they think about this. So Colombo Bianca is it's one of the one of the first wines I, I picked up when we opened when we opened the winery here, and it's someone that I've always loved. Um, because a lot of the time you go, a wine's going to be from a certain place, a certain this, a certain that, a certain that to be great but these guys have two and a half thousand farmers growing grapes mm. all over Sicily and bringing them back together 
which allows them to make the style that they want. Because and and yeah, to be clear, that's 2,500 groups of farms. 2,500 farms, each with all of their different vineyard staff, the people who are going out and weeding and, and pruning and spraying and all of the other things you have to do. It's, it's, it's an astonishing number of people they have working for their organisation, really, isn't it? Um, absolutely. And, but what that allows them to do is, on any given year, if it's a little bit... Yeah. Colder, they can get more ripe fruit. Probably if it's there. a little bit warmer, they can get more high acid fruit. So they're able to make this balance of wine yeah. and create the style that they want every year. They're not mm -hmm. held captive to this one particular place. And, and some people love that. Some people want to have this vintage variation yeah. that yeah. 2017 was different to 2019 and different to 1482 or whatever year they last made some wine. Yep. But this allows them at this level and this price point to make a consistent style yeah. year in, year out. And, and also to do that, I, it, it's not a very sexy thing to talk about, but an awful lot of science goes into it. They will be looking and analysing every single one of these lots of wines that comes in from all of these different parts of the farm. And they'll be looking at what the flavour profiles are. So they can almost sort of mathematically work out what the blend should be to give the right kind of flavour profile they've got. They use, I, we're discoverers, we're not supposed to be doing anything but like that. But I'm going to anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Although I can't quite remember, it's basically bong, um, I don't know, what on earth is going on there? Um, oh, Alex is watching YouTube in the background. Yeah. Checking the sound was working. Anyway, um, yeah, gas chromatography mass spectrometry. That's Discover series. Don't worry about it. It's basically, it gives you this plot showing what the peaks of the different chemicals that make up the different flavours are. And He says and it, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. About it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a cool thing and you get this and you can overlay them and you can go, right, that one's got a bit too much of that thing that I don't want. Right, we won't have that. Or maybe we can really bring this in because it's got some of those bits we really do need. So yeah, it's, it's very cool. No, and I think there's a, there's a point there, you know, San Teresa, Sicily looks like a little island, but it is, yeah, it is quite massive. Yeah. You're about five hours to drive north to south. It's... Well, it depends who you get stuck behind. If you're behind one of the mafia bosses. But the, <coughs> in Italy, in Sicily, they, you have two hands for driving, okay? One hand is to hold your mobile phone and talk to your friend. The other hand is to gesticulate out the window while you use your knee for steering. It's... Possibly one of the most scary places I've ever driven in my entire life. In fact, it was. I, I, the very moment we got out of the airport, we drove up to a set of traffic lights. And you would naturally think that there are two lanes here at the traffic lights. That's what was marked on the road. But apparently, those little white lines between you are spaces for cars to drive between you and on the outside of you and then try to overtake you when the lights go green. It's brilliant fun. So what I'm going to say about this one, so we're 100% near to Avila, because I don't mm -hmm. think we've mentioned the grape. And, um, you know, Coloma Bianca make lots of different range. So this is their Vitesse range. They make another range called Corde. Um, but this is vegan, organic. Um, not all their wines there are, but about 80% mm -hmm. of their vineyards are now organic. And mm. they're slowly kind of trying to get people to move on because they, as the co-op, they will pay um, the farmers more money yeah. to be. So they're paying for quality of grape rather than volume of grape. Yeah. It's, so you get more per ton if you follow these rules and regulations, which I think is, is huge and I think very Yeah, I, th I think it's, it, it, sounds, it sounds like it shouldn't be controversial, doesn't it? Uh, guess what? Pay for good quality rather than just for how much quality, you make. Yeah. And you stand a better chance of making good wine out of it. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and in a place where there is such competition, it's too easy to get into a race at the bottom. A lot of the cooperatives, that was the, the trap they fell into, was, well, we've got to be cheaper. That's the only way we can do it, is to be cheaper. We can be bigger, we can be cheaper, and, and that's, that's what we should do. No, make something that's nice. <laughs> and I think this is delicious. There's a point in there, four is much better than three. Um, I think it's easy, right? I, I think it's very difficult to put these two wines side by side, and yeah, this is a cool, funky one. We, and we'll we'll bring it back up next month when we do South Africa. But we had a we had a fantastic winemaker in um, in that we talked to a little bit, who turned around and said that um, comparison is the thief of joy, <laughs> and I like that a lot um, because it. I don't think it's about which one of these, and this is personal opinion. You can jump oh. in and say whatever you like. 
I don't think one of these is better than the other because I just think they're vastly different. The the frappato is light, fresh cherry. The nero is more of these dark fruits, forest fruits, a little bit more kind of a uh, little bit more yeah. spice on there. I think that's more... got a broader appeal, and that's got a more kind of niche appeal. That's cult classic, and that's you know bestseller. Bestseller, exactly. Listen um, to the streets. Indeed. So, what what are you going for at the time? Really, going kind of different things. There's probably more interest in this one, but this is a, this is one that I would just crack open and have a glass this, of. This <laughs> this during lock, lockdown was my. It goes with pizza. It goes with burgers. Yeah. It goes with all by itself. It was a. It was a lockdown lockdown saver for me, so that's mm. what it was. Anyway, do you think we should move on to the the next wine? Is everyone ready for the next wine? I think so. You should go well, get I think it. We now. should. All right, so I'll go and get a get a pouch bit. So, the small issue with the next wine is <laughs> there was so little of it available. We don't even have a bottle left at the moment. So uh, <laughs> me and Alex have to share a pouch because there's. Not a uh, not a bottle. Thing. There's some more coming. But it's a good job because the pouch is the perfect size for two people to share. Yeah. So. But that means Caroline's going to cry then. Yep. Right. She'll just have more of the Nero Devolo, I think. Mm. Or she's eyeing up the Marsala already, I, I see. <laughs> so when's that coming? Y6. Everybody to Y6. Everybody to Y6. All right. So we are moving to... And this 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 was interesting. When we when we first came up with, with Sicily... Um, once again, not wanting to get too much into pricing before we announce the prices. Alex was like, it would be really good to do an Etna Rosso. Yes. yes and I'm like, was. our Etna Rosso is really expensive <laughs> because it's on a volcano. Yeah. And uh, you is can't, it? you can't, yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> you sit down for my word. Who let her back in the building? <laughs> um, so, on a volcano, and it's, a, it's an active <laughs> volcano, and it erupts, and... Believe it or not, of all the things in the world, there is no such thing as volcano insurance. No. <laughs> so therefore, you can have a lovely little winery, and if you are the wrong path of the lava flow, you have less of a lovely little winery for it, a it's, while. It's incredible. It, it leaves, you, you see these shapes carved <coughs> into the vineyards, absolutely carved into the vineyards. You can go and see this. Um, <laughs> you, you can go and see this even on the Google Maps, so you can zoom in and you can spot the lava flow and it's literally gone it through the middle of a vineyard and now it is two smaller vineyards. And, um, and there's just not much you can do about that. But of course it is so mineral rich. It's just so mineral rich, that soil. It is, there's an energy to it. There's this kind of, it's young soil. It's, it's soil that's just come up from the, uh, from the, you know, the bottom of the earth and it, it, it's, 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 it's coming out and just with such energy, and it makes wines with vivacity and energy, and they're cool. So, so sorry, very, not sorry. So, very safe place to wander around in your flip flops. A very safe place to wander around. So, in he's going to tell you a story now. All right. Okay. The year was, I believe, two thousand and five or so, which is why I looked so young BC and thin. BC um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> And um, we we were staying in uh, just just to north of. Um, of the mountain, northeast of the mountain, there's a little town called Castiglione di Sicilia. Um, but like we were just Italian. sort of off into the countryside in the, in the middle of the vineyards because, well, me. Um, <laughs> that was where I had picked. And one day we just got, we woke up in the middle of the night, a vast, vast amount of the, uh, um, of, 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 of lava was sort of flowing down the side towards us. It was quite sort of, we were sat there looking and going, oh, isn't that pretty? Should we go? <laughs> and, um, and and uh, anyway, the, we we made it through the night unscathed. The next day, um, uh, we went down to Siracusa on the southeast corner. Absolutely beautiful port town, really lovely. And driving back up in the evening, I just sort of looked at the map. I thought, should we drive up the mountain as far as we can get and and, and see this volcano erupting up close? Thinking that would be a perfectly good plan. So I did, and we got up to the, about as far as we could get in the car, and. Um, my friend and I was just we had been dressed for the day at the beach and seaside, uh, in our flip flops, casual little t-shirt and a pair of shorts, strolled up the mountain. And it was only after we'd been climbing up for about an probably about an hour that we met a group of hikers in hard hats and full protective gear coming and torches and everything, coming down towards us, going, We're getting out of here. Uh, what the hell are you guys doing kind of thing. We carried on to the top exactly. where we found... Being English. What did we do? Where did we, what did we find at the top? Not the top of the volcano. We've, we got up to a little foothill 
and we found what you always find when you've hiked somewhere. Mordor. Not Mordor. Oh. Hippies with a dog um, and a campfire watching the volcano burn. <laughs> It was brilliant. So, yeah, fun, fun place. You can ski on the volcano in winter. It's got a lot of the altitude. But, um, but yeah, when you look at the effect it has on the vineyards, this thick black layer of... Um, uh, and you think it's probably been there, you know, five years or so. It might be there for 50 years. It's, it's still so, fresh as anything. So this is Teresa de Etna. Uh, so it's an <laughs> Etna Rosso, and it's made with a grape called Norella Mascalesi. <laughs> it's the main one. Um, <coughs> and it's all these old bush vines it's yeah. all kind of hand picked all this kind of like gnarly old vines um so they make they make a white they then make this one which is called their caruso um which means young in sicilian dialect because it's their younger wine and there's a little bit of nerello cappuccino um is blended in that so it's about 80 20 percent and then they've got their high-end one which is um the Curi, which is 100% Norello, which is very just deep and tannic and chewy. And, yeah. You know, needs to sit in a decanter for about three and a half years, but it's absolutely <laughs> epic. But this, I think, is just, it's drinkable now. It's absolutely It's delightful. such good quality. The flavor, I mean, is, is it necessarily, is it the flavor that you really like? Do, should we bring up the um, uh, things so we can see them? That would be good to see the tasting notes. But it's it's got... The length goes on. There's so many different flavours going on, but whether from the berries to the spice and things like menthol getting in. Do you get some smoke from the volcano? Do you know what? Po quite possibly, quite possibly. You certainly get a lot of this anything, sulfurous smells coming that out comes of the off ground. And sits on the grapes is going to end up in the wine. So yeah. if you're going to smoke it, you know, you look at that. California has wildfires. Mm -hmm. uh, South Africa has wildfires, and you do get that that smoke taint. In some ways, it can be. Nasty in some mm. ways, it becomes part of the style, and I think if they've got that, yeah. So, these are um, these are definitely food wines, the Etna Rossos, and you really want to go. And the, the Sicilian foods, obviously, they've got lots of lovely fresh seafood, but they do big, hearty stuff as well. And so, it's a it's really, really cool wine to try. And I'm glad we did put that in. Yeah, because. I'm excited we found a home for it. Yes, really excited we indeed, found a home for it. Um, indeed. It shows that it's not just the simpler, delicious, fruity, classic styles. We've got we've got funky native varieties. We've got delicious, more sort of Italian standard ones. We've got things that only grow on on Sicily. We've got stuff that you might get in in Puglia or other parts of Italy as well. But it's just so reliable and delicious. Finds a great home. And then we've got stuff like this, which I. I I don't think there's anything else that I've drunk that tastes a bit like this. Duck a la orange. Duck a la orange. Mm. I think it's a good idea to rustle up something a bit beefy to go with it. Yeah, for sure. You could have, um, you know, it's just some of some of the great, you know, proper cured salamis would would even go nicely with that, wouldn't yeah, they? It sits. It's chewy. It's, mm -hmm. mm. <coughs> Oh, very cool. Lucky, I nearly lost my voice yesterday, but I'm back. <laughs> so it's all right. Yesterday I couldn't talk. Uh, I'm back, which uh, might be a positive for some, might be very negative for others. You know. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but yeah, I think I think Etna also, and they make Etna Biancos as well. Um, usually made with Catarato, um, an absolutely fantastic wine. Because we talk about you know soil types when we go around the world. We talk about limestone. We talk about clay. Mm -hmm. But volcanic soil has this amazing, amazing drainage that the water yeah. runs through it. The vines have to strive. The yield is low, yeah. so you get this mega, mega intensity. And I don't think there's, and there's going to be someone out there that tells me, well, I don't think there is a soil type on the planet that gives you more of a sense of place mm. as from where the wine come from to sitting on these volcanic soils, which can make it divisive. Absolutely, it can make it divisive. It, it's it's not a please everyone wine. That one's more of a please everyone wine. This is a. a find out something whether you like it or don't like it, and that is totally fine, because oh. a lot of the Rosso's are going to be bigger than this. Absolutely, so there's, there's wines here that if someone sat around the table at a restaurant and someone's having this and someone's having this, someone's having the other, the bottle of wine you put in the middle, that, that without um. a question of a doubt, without a question of a doubt. But this is, you know, <coughs> a certain wine for a certain time, mm -hmm. certain place, it's, you know, it needs It's a some geeky love. wine, it isn't it? It needs some air, yeah. it needs, just the right pairing. This isn't something that I would sit and drink two, three glasses no. by itself no. because it's it's too much. But it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, um, and I think I think what you're saying about the the drainage of the soil. When you look at the 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 
the, the stones that have come out of a volcano, they're just full of holes, full of air, aren't they? Like Swiss cheese. Like, well, yeah, yeah, mi microscopic Swiss cheese. What is this, Swiss cheese for ants? Um, at least three times. It would bigger, have to be at least three times bigger to be proper Swiss cheese. But yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's a... And of course, there's ash that comes down as well. You get an awful lot of ash coming down. Um, yeah, I think... I think it's I think it's definitely one to check out because it is unique and that's that's what we like about it. But talking of unique, wine oh, six hang is hang on. somebody oh. is in the US watching us. Oh hello, Linda. Hi, whoever's in the US. Um, love you dearly. For those of you who know, I spent a lot of time out there. Oh yeah, I said that again. Um, to be fair, mm. I'm not. A, I'm not a hundred percent sure because a lot of wine depends on who's importing, who's exporting, and where it's going. I would expect something like the Colombo Bianca would be available in the States, so something like the Manda Rossa probably would be. Um, you would probably find some at the Rossas, won't you? you know, you'd go for an Italian specialist, I think. Yeah, um, but if you want to pop us an email, uh, info at onlinewinetasting.co. Online no. um, uh, yes. yes, that's it. Well, that send, won't get through to anyone, but that's fine. All right, send it to me then, jamie yeah. at onlinewinetasting.co. There we go. Send us an email and I can do a little bit of research for you and let you know, A, if it's important to the States, and B, because of the joys of the three-tier system and where it can get shipped to and not shipped to, <laughs> if it's in your local part of the world. And I'm guessing at 3 p.m. you're probably somewhere more centralish, aren't you? So maybe maybe Chicago. Can I guess Chicago? <laughs> do I win a prize? But there Chicago, we go. Mini Chicago. beef pasties. Mini beef pasties sounds a good pairing for me. I, you I, need I, I to do start that. sending this food in. I mean, mini beef pasties are great whatever. Yeah, with beer. With anything. Exactly. It doesn't sound you know, too the bad. Only better than a mini beef pasty is a big large one. beef pasty. Exactly. Anyway, but we are digressing into mini beef pasties. Are we? Uh, <laughs> <coughs> not like no, us. we're not. We're not digressing. We I'm are never knife. doing these kind of things. But anyway, Alex is going to attempt to open a bottle of masala without any chicken and without any tikka. Yeah, I had to make that. You point. had to, well, I've already done it in the video as well, so uh, yes. one, one up to you there. Oh, okay. But um, uh, yes, so Marsala is quite, it's very much gone out of fashion. It was one of the biggest things that Sicily made for years and years, wasn't it? It was a hugely popular drink um, well, several yeah, decades for, ago. Falsified was yeah. for the longest time. Port Absolutely. and sherry and Madeira and Marsala. Especially ones with a bit of sweetness too. Well, I think, I think, you know, and Masala goes from drop, very similar to Sherry, goes from very dry to, oh, Midwest. Yeah. My wife's family's from uh, Wisconsin, so, you know, I know the Midwest quite well. I'm just, yeah. okay, we're going to have a little side, sidebar. Yeah, 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 you, you carry on um, having your Sicilian so, American tasting. So I think, very good. You know, Masala, Masala, for those who are into, um, you know, their, their fortified wines, it kind of sits somewhere between Madeira and Sherry <laughs> because you've got the different grape varieties. You know, it's made generally in Zolio, Cetrato, um and Grillo, uh, your three grapes, mm -hmm. in there. Um, and you can have dry, you have so most of them are slightly sweet. Yeah. Um, but what the big difference is here is in, in far, you know, and I'll go back, this is made by the same guys who make this. Yep. So they're a masala producer. Um, but they also make uh, their dry wines as well from there and so they're absolutely lovely, lovely people and look them up on the internet. We should have more pictures of it because it's like the most beautiful place you've ever seen. You literally can, yeah, look, out the, you can look out the sort of... front of the, uh, of the wine and see the ocean. It's amazing. Mm. <coughs> but what they do is, what you find with a lot of fortified wines, take something like port, is you start fermenting. You get the grapes very, very ripe. You start fermenting and then you add... Alcohol to fortify Caroline. while it's still switch on to the next tasting rooms. While it's still sweet. So you add that kind of sweetness. You know, you keep the sweetness from the grapes. With this, what they do is they ferment it to absolutely, absolutely dry, mm -hmm. and then they fortify it, and then they make this musto, which they take great must and they cook it down and cook yeah. it down and cook it down. It's <laughs> somewhere between molasses and honey. And syrup. Yeah, and it's and, that caramelly flavour comes from caramel. that. It's cooked. And it's literally cooked. I've not been to Sicily <laughs> myself, but I've been told when they're making this stuff and they cook it for weeks, mm. that the entire vineyard and the person I was talking to from uh, from the wine was like, it just that is like the smell of their childhood, <laughs> which is absolutely phenomenal. It must be fairly astonishing. Um, and then they add that in yeah. to bring the sweetness back up. And I just think it is such an 
interesting, such a unique a totally different style of wine style. that yeah. has just it's lost its way a little bit. There's a lot of chefs who use it for cooking sauces, don't they? And as you'll find a lot of masala sauces for using this wine, not not the tikka masala. No, but chicken but, masala. Yeah, with a yeah was exactly. That's huge, but it's got this sweetness, but it's still got this nice toastiness. Mm -hmm. It's got this little bit of burn. And it's not cloying. I don't know if I've got the tech like here for... No, they recommend that you have it a bit chilled again, just like this, and yeah. But, you know, it's... There's a decent amount of sugar in there. It's it's 110 grams a litre. Mm -hmm. But that's not, you know, I tasted some sweet Rieslings today that yeah. were 212 grams. <laughs> it's it's not over the top. Um, as far as blend, 65 griot, 25 cataretta, 10% insulia, um, for those who, who care. Keeping the running order of uh, the... the famous three of these white grapes but yeah it uh, but it doesn't look white and that's because you've literally so i think we should just quickly explain one term that we used must you talk, used must now they so we see, must explain we that. must explain that so must is the mixture of crushed up grapes and juice that you get so you'll the the first thing you want to do when you're trying to make a wine um well there's lots of, obviously there's the subtleties to this, but generally speaking, you crush the grapes so that the juice can mix with the skins um, and, uh, and, and, and ferment um, for a red wine. Um, but you'll crush it anyway and then press it so it's just easier to press if you're doing a white wine. Don't correct me because I know that there's lots of exceptions to that rule, but generally speaking, that's what we're doing. But the must is what you call this stewy, mushy mixture of grapes and juice that, that my three-year-old girl, when I was doing a, <coughs> an Italian wine, she was just she was just just dipping in with a spoon and just she just just loved it. It was just yeah. so delicious. She's six now. That's She's the last six time now. he made some wine. I did do it the following year. I did. Anyway, I will get on with it. I just can't find any grapes at the moment, which is an odd problem given that we apparently planted nine million vines since the first time we did Sicily in a tasting. Okay. Yeah, not pieced. But it's uh, where this compares, and I think I think there is. Uh, can you taste the difference in technique? I think you absolutely can because the oxygen contact you'd get with your Madeira is done through age and like keeping these barrels hot. It's on that style of things more but than they, the sherry. But, but they aged this for five years in Slovenian oak before it's released. It hangs out for a long time before yeah, they do anything yeah. with it. So, but I just think it's it's the joy of these tastings that we can, you know, chuck something like this mm -hmm. in and go, I, I've heard of this. I wouldn't have picked yeah. it off the shelf for the last 20 years. And you, I think this is going to be a Marmite kind of wine. You're going to love it and go, this is epic or... It's just yeah. not for me, and that's absolutely fine. It does, though, come with a bit of a thing. Because it's a style of wine that we're less comfortable with, less familiar with these days, when do you drink it? When is the occasion for drinking this sort of wine? Is it a cheese boars wine, or is it an aperitif? Or what's, what's, what do or you is think? Or is it a Discoverer series finishing it up for the evening? Well, it could be, it could be. But, but I think that could go with some cheeses. This, I think, you know, yeah. Any cheese that's got that kind of like nuttiness about it, something like yeah. a manchego or Comte something like that, or something, exactly. yeah. it has that nuttiness about it. That would be good, cheese. wouldn't it? Yeah, but you can also do the other way because it's got this 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 kind of like nuttiness about it. If you want to do this with dessert, and you can have almost like a dolce de leche ice cream or a tres leches kind of cake that has that caramel and that salt in it, that you yeah. have that savouriness about it. I think that would go really, really well. So you do taste a bit of the salt. Could, could we show the tasting notes? Because obviously yes. that's that's. Uh, that would be cool to see. Caramel bonfire toffee. That's a lovely specific one. Candied orange. Yes. That orange peel candy thing and that you get. And catamel. <laughs> Made with real pieces of cat. Real so pieces of cat. you know it's got to be good. But yeah, it is. It's all these kind of... It's, it's very almost like fireworks night, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's a, and, and that's a cool thing. Why, why, why don't we... Give ourselves a treat and try something that's a bit like this once in a while. Obviously, it's not going to be the best wine to be drinking every day of the year, but but as a treat wine, I I, I think that's great. And the lovely thing is, it, it's it's a bit higher in alcohol, isn't it? So the eighteen percent. So this will keep a little bit longer than many wines would. Exactly. You can, and this, this is the thing. So, you know, we said have this chill, and this is one of those that it could be a bit chilled, not very yeah. very chilled. So kind of. 12, 14 degrees is a good mm -hmm. number for this, that you want to have it, you don't want it room temperature. Well, as I said, drink it how you like, but I wouldn't have it room, room temperature. Um, 
but that, yeah. that's my thought. I think I think I'd have it a bit colder as an aperitif, and maybe, you know, perhaps be less bothered about that if I was having it with some with some oh, so with some cheese. So you're bookending your dinner bookend with masala. I'd my dinner party with masala. Yeah, okay, that's a cool one. A, di- a Sicilian dinner bookended by masala. I could do that. That sounds fun. I like that. Blue cheese. I like that idea, Valerie. That's epic. That's well, blue epic. cheese works so nicely with the ice wines as well that's, that uh, were being mentioned earlier. And that, that's a, always a great combination. Right, but lots of good stuff. A lots cool, of good stuff. A cool wine from a cool place, a cool part of the world. But that, quite a warm part of the world. A warm part a of the warm, world. A warm, cool part. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going up? Just so what are we got going on next month? So just so everybody is aware, next month is August. Is it next month? Yeah, next month is August. Oh, and because lots of people go away and lots of people disappear and the world is what it is, um, we are still going to do discoveries and we are still going to do adventures. However, <coughs> we are going to do it as a pre-recorded video. So no more tech problems. So yes. you won't get all of us live, but <clears> there. So, we'll be watching so, along in the chat. So you can watch it whenever yeah. you like, but we will send out um, a time that we will we be have a watch in the chat session, yeah. to ask along. So um, just while everyone's getting away and school holidays and all that kind of stuff. So have you just got some Dolce de Leche <laughs> on the side, Kathy? That's all, that's all I'm asking. Oh, just pop that yeah. out. Dad. She's just popped into the pantry. And... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I need to see what your, your, that's, your that's pantry fair. and your fridge looks like, Kathy. I'm uh, impressed. Um, so next month we're going to have a couple of pre-records. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. The um, the world's coming back to life in the wine world. Yeah. I was um, in London at Masters Riesling uh, this morning and met a lot of cool winemakers who like our project and want to get involved. Um, there's lots of cool stuff happening. So um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, really. Exciting Shall times. we flick onto the wines of the night to see yeah. which people prefer? Time and... to vote for yeah. your wine of the. And I, ju- I just want to be very clear with this because. There's wine at night and not wine at night. But I don't think there's a bad wine out there. So, you know, the wine that finishes bottom doesn't mean no, that it's, it's a bad a, no, wine. No, absolutely not. I think, and from what the comments are, it's the best of a good bunch yeah. rather than being the worst of a bad bunch. And yeah, I think there's fine. a lot of exciting stuff up there. Um, for, what, so what's it for you? Because I think... <coughs> I, there's, there's, there's so many interesting different wines there. Um, I think the thing that needs to be considered is... What's, I can't pick. What's the reason? Yeah. What's what the reason for the wine? wine? What am I cracking it open? Want yeah. something completely unique that I don't think I would crack open um, a Madeira quite in the same way as that. That's I, I prefer that to a lot of the Madeiras I've had. Yeah. Um, um, and that's all, cool. They all sit light, fresh, easy drinking. That. Yeah. A little bit of a you know seafood. That. Something cold sitting yeah. in the garden. That. But I tell you what, seafood. I would go for that with something like. Mussels or oysters, like because it's just that more deco yeah. flavour. Bunch of mates right. around who aren't quite sure what they want. That goes that in the one? middle. Yep. Um, you know, a big steak, big lamb, dinner yep. party. Big. The Etna. Yeah. And then for it's good, isn't cool, it? You like that. For something cool that. and funky, the masala. And yeah. And I think I love the comments that people said this is the best flight we've had. That's good. and that that's exciting. Yeah, the masala started top thirty seconds ago, and now <laughs> it's swapped and. And there's nothing, it's all, it's a vote yeah. or two, It's isn't very it? close, just like the Essex one, wasn't it? That was ridiculously close as well. So we're going, we're going to let this go for a, go for a... Yeah, a so, the, so the two tastings we've got coming up next month, <laughs> pardon me, the first one we're going to be doing, well, we, it's, at the moment, this is barbecue week, apparently, this is National Barbecue Week. Something so like we, didn't, we didn't manage to time that one well, but we decided we didn't just want to do a barbecue wine tasting because that's a bit boring. So what we're working on, and um, this is the plan, is we're working on a South African barbecue. A braai. A braai, indeed, which are wonderful hardwood cooked barbecue normally. We'll forgive you if you stick it on the gas burner or on your charcoal, but, but we would, what we'd love to do is to pick some of those things that people are talking about today, ostrich meat, kudu meat, you know, spring bog, biltong, and some of those things, and, and have a bit of fun with pairing some wines which go well with a, with a South African yeah. barbecue. Tom, and that's you, we're looking Tom are you going to organise an uh, online wine tasting club uh, group trip to Sicily? Let us know. We'll come. We'll be your That hosts. sounds good. That sounds good. I like that idea. Yeah. We definitely awesome. like that idea. And the other one we're going to do... We haven't really, well, it's, we just decided we would actually try to do some of our favourites. Our favourite wines, just to make yes. it personal. This is, we, we've been trying to shoehorn things into themes for an awfully long time now. So um, adventures <laughs> next month is um, Alex's favourites, my favourites. So yeah. um, if you don't like them, <laughs> deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, well, um, it's, it's, an, it's another wow. excuse for 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 us to compare the professional sommelier against the former computer designer bloke, and I will lose undoubtedly. But what should we? Okay, here's another little poll for that. Should we invite Caroline into that? So she picks two. So we do two flights, whites and reds. Two flights, whites and reds. What do you think? What would you prefer? Just an Alex versus Jamie or an Alex, Jamie, Caroline three-way battle? Or just Jamie versus... So I like or, how I said battle there. Or yeah. just Jamie versus Caroline. <laughs> oh, well, yes. Oh, well, I'm unlucky. <laughs> I'm not going to put the uh, Alex oh, versus God, Caroline the option. pressure. Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, I think we are yabbering on because we we, we've gone over time and it's an absolute pleasure. Yes, Cathy wants Caroline to choose two. Let Caroline choose. You're not allowed to pick anything from our Three-way. Marcus wants a three-way. <laughs> oh, stop it. Three way back. Caroline, three way. All right. All right. Uh, there we go. Right. You're in. You're in, Stranders. Anyway, it's going to be yellow tail. It's going to be yellow tail. All right. Anyway, you're all getting a bit silly because it's part we of time. Should we ask them when they've had a nice time? No. Hang no. On, we haven't had the final. Oh, result. yeah, let's see the final. Oh, it won at it the end. Was. Hey, that's a good result for uh, Curatolo in you know, Arini, Ar Ar Arini, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, one and two. One and two. Yeah, Fantastic. Happy I will know. I will yeah. let them know. I think okay, that's let's very see if cool. everyone's had a good night. And, um, you mean if anyone's had a good yeah, night? Yeah, let's see. Good night. That. Yeah. But, yeah, otherwise, we're, we're very much looking forward to doing a few things. We know that everyone's back out again. We do want to do a live tasting somewhere soon. Um, it's just that the, the, we're scared of the tech stuff, <laughs> to be quite honest. But, but, uh, but what we always should want to do is, if, if people want to come down and drink with so us... So what, what's that no mean? You're slightly that. ridiculous. Well, I'd no, be it was all slightly ridiculous. Well, it was all slightly ridiculous, to be fair. It was a bit ridiculous. ridiculous. So we could say, we could say, yes, it was all good, or yes, it was all slightly ridiculous. They should both be yes answers. Do you like my basic Italian? That's come very... See. <laughs> I'm sure someone will be there picking holes yes, in there. What have you written there? Anyway, oh, an anyway. absolute pleasure yep. as always. Glad Thank you did. very and much if you indeed. like it... Oh, tell yeah. a friend. See us again. And if you didn't like it, pop us an email and tell us why. Yeah, so we can make, so it, we can better make it better next time. We're sorry about the videos, right. problems, but um, yeah, um, hope you enjoyed anyway, the wines. We're going to roll credits. Ciao for you. Oh, Ciao yes. from all of us and have a wonderful rest of your week. Good night. <laughs> Good night. We thought we'd show you the prices. <laughs> so actually, what the thing, for those of you who are still here, hello, well done on not running away. Um, there's some great value wines there, there really are. And especially when you look at that delicious uh, 1095 Nero Davila, uh, absolutely brilliant. And thank you all for your lovely comments in the chat. We really appreciate it. But yeah, pop onto our website. We'll get some orders in. Um, what, uh, it might take us a few weeks for some of these to come in. There's a lot of supply chain problems in the wine industry at the moment. But yes, check out the wines. They're on the website. And, um, and do pop in an order for any that you fancy. We've got plenty of the Nero Dabbler in stock. Cheers. Cheers, guys.